Hello. I received some great feedback on my last video blog from an experienced software developer. The title of that video blog was the most in-demand skill for future software developers and where to find it. His comments led me to create this new video blog, and I suspect this one will generate even more comments. So let's get into it. Let me start by sharing a part of his feedback that got me thinking. Paul, I did breathe a sigh of relief when you acknowledged that generative AI has no understanding of the material it is generating and is, in the terminology I've come to adopt for it, glorified word association. Will generative tools expeditiously propagate the programming errors we've seen for 50 plus years? As you note, obviously, partly because of this, I have a hard time buying into the notion that chat GPT will automate the menial coding tasks and that developers then will simply recognize the reappearance of these age old errors and fix them. At this point, he has my attention. But what really got me thinking deeper about this subject, after we had gone through a few more exchanges back and forth, was when he said, I did get a sense from your video that you were thinking that generative AI is going to infiltrate software development to such an extent that a developer's job is going to evolve into one of fixing generatively produced code. My opinion on this is that while corporate initiatives to inject code generating AI into the development process might be undertaken in the pursuit of cutting costs and shortening schedules, they will fail fast. So now, I'm starting to rethink what I said in my last video blog. Surely, as this experienced software developer pointed out, good programmers will see the folly in this generative AI software development approach, and such efforts will certainly fail fast. Or will they? After thinking a bit more about my own personal software development experiences from back in the 80s and 90s, I then replied with, you're making a good point, but do you remember the big reuse movement in software development back in the 80s and 90s? I then went on to remind this experienced software developer of that period back in the 80s and 90s when companies were all hot to build these big software reuse libraries. And yes, the thinking from management was this would save us huge amounts of money because we wouldn't have to redevelop all that code. And the fact is, I worked for one of those companies that did start bidding reuse with plans for significant savings. But what everybody missed was the fact that that software had not been developed with reuse in mind. And if you're wondering, yes, there is a way to develop software for reuse, but that requires a different way of thinking. And what is also a fact that this ended up costing us in many cases more than if we had just planned to redevelop that software from scratch. Now, before I go on with this story, I need to make one thing perfectly clear, because I know I may be setting myself up for more comments on software reuse, just like the comments I got on the last one for uh, for, for uh, AI, generated software. 
I am not against software reuse. Understand that. I know that there are cases where auto-genning software or uh, using legacy software makes sense, but we also know that there is a break point where the cost and effort to reuse can quickly go the wrong way. And experienced software developers know this. Now I want you to think about what I just said, especially that last part about experienced software developers know this, because this fact leads directly to a key point I want to make in this blog, and that is the fact that to determine that breakpoint takes think work, and generative AI can't do this kind of work. The fact is, it not only takes think work to come up with the answer, it takes think work to be able to explain how you came up with your answer. And generative AI can't do this kind of work. Now, please understand the importance of this because on real projects, there are real people with budgets who have to make decisions and they need to understand the rationale for a particular approach. And again, to state it again, if you didn't get it, generative AI systems can't do this because they don't even know what they are doing. As it turns out, my experienced software developer had indeed remembered the big reuse initiatives of the past, and he had even been involved in a few of them himself. As he replied to me, Paul, hey, oh yeah, I definitely remember the whole big reuse push. And I remember at one time being tasked with coming up with a way to organize the reusable assets of the project. And I pulled up some studies that showed if you had to touch even 20% of the code, it was cheaper to write from scratch. Basically, if you couldn't reuse the code as is, it was rarely worth the effort. So yes, I see the same thing happening with generative AI. So to conclude this blog, the main point I want to leave you with is actually a clarification of the main point I made in the previous blog. I said in my last blog that the people who will be best equipped to do this type of think work will be those with an understanding of the most common human mistakes we have been making for the last 50 years, along with how to fix them. I also stated in that previous blog that it is absolutely amazing how many of the problems software developers are making today that are ex the exact same problems software developers have been making for the last 50 years. But now, thanks to the feedback I received on my previous blog, I want to clarify what I mean when I refer to the most common human mistakes. And that is that I am not just talking about programming mistakes, but also analysis mistakes and management mistakes that lead to costly decisions when history related to likely ramifications is not understood or is forgotten or simply not acted on in a timely fashion. And yes, software developers do need management skills because at a minimum, they need to manage themselves and their own work. And please don't forget this, that software developer who motivated this follow on blog understands these issues because he was around like I was many years ago and experienced these same issues. But what about our new software developers? And what about the new software managers who never lived through those past experiences?
This certainly is a different world than the one I lived in back in the 80s and 90s when we made those reuse mistakes. And today we have better technologies and approaches. But contrary to what some may think, there are, in fact, essentials that never change. And by learning those essentials and keeping them close, we can focus our limited time and energy on the new and interesting things rather than solving the same old problems again and again. If you're interested in learning more about the things that never change, or about my background as the author of this video blog, or about my training courses, please refer to my website, https colon slash slash essence dash in dash use dot com. As always, feedback is encouraged. Thanks for listening.